So welcome to the SNHS March trip. Today we'll be going to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. So first, a little bit about the museum. It was created with the purpose of connecting visitors to past, present, and future space and air commitments with two locations, one in Washington, D.C. and the other in Chantilly, VA. It welcomes over 8 million visitors a year. Their mission is commemorating, educating, and inspiring through the culture and history of space and aircraft. So some fun facts about the museum. Since it opened in 1976, it has welcomed more than 311 million visitors. The museum in Washington, D.C. has 21 ex exhibition galleries from topics about the Wright brothers to the Apollo space program. Its facility holds the most popular, complete co pop collection, sorry, of aviation and space images with more than 1.5 million photographs and 14,000 film and video titles. So the first exhibit is the tracking and data relays Relay Satellite or the TDRS. It is on display at the James S. McDonald Space Hangar on the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center in Chantilly, VA. It was created from wood, glass, captain, and plastic. And basically the reason why it was created was because NASA realized that during the first decades of the space age, they needed a worldwide network of ground stations that would be able to communicate with satellites and human operated spacecraft. The TDRS system was thus created for this purpose and has provided nearly continuous contact with spacecraft in a low earth orbit. The TDRS system was placed into this geosynchronous orbit in 1983 and can transmit both voice and data, making it a very useful system. This satellite was given to the museum in 1986 by TRW. Sorry about that. Uh, the next exhibit is the Wright Brothers and the Invention of the Aerial Age. The 1903 Wright Flyer the world's first successful airplane is the centerpiece of this exhibition, which celebrates the centennial of the Wright Brothers' historic flights. In the museum, the airplane is displayed on the floor so you can get a close-up, eye-level look at the historic craft that ushered in the age of flight. This exhibition shows how Orville and Wilbur Wright figured out how to design their plane's wings using a movable, movable rudder. They partner with their mechanic to build a gasoline engine light enough to their sorry about that. They partner with their mechanic to build a gasoline engine light enough and powerful enough to propel an airplane. When their creation was complete, their plane flew for 59 seconds and over a distance of 852 feet. The next exhibit, Clouds in a Bag. The hot air balloon first introduced in late 1783 amazed people all around the world. The exhibition donated by Evelyn Way Kendall and Henry Plimpton Kendall displays arts, prints, posters, objects, manuscripts, and books documenting the history of flight. The depiction of the hot air balloon in the pieces provide a sense of fascination experienced by those who witnessed the early flight over two centuries ago. Cold War and the Lockheed's SR-71 Blackbird. After tensions had grown between the US and the Soviet Union after World War II, a new war was inevitable with the Cold War beginning in 1947. In 1960, an American U-2 stealth plane was shot down by the USSR, meaning that it was necessary for new innovations in the aeronautics field to be made in order to win the war. Lockheed Martin, an American aviation company constructed the largely titanium SR-71 Blackbird in 1966, with it being the pinnacle of aviation technology. The Blackbird reached speeds of up to 2,124 miles per hour and far exceeded the speed of Soviet missiles. The SR-71 even used black paint to absorb radar signals and radiate heat from air friction. Without these advancements, the U.S. might not have stood a chance against the USSR because of dated U-2 aircraft technology. 
on March 6, 1990, Ed Yielding set a speed record of 2,124 miles per hour in a flight from LA to Washington, DC, taking just over one hour. The aircraft was then gifted to the Smithsonian to display. Neil Armstrong's Apollo 11 space suit. After undergoing an extensive conser conservation process, Neil Armstrong's space suit from the Apollo 11 moon landing is back on display for the first time in 13 years. The conservation process was funded by thousands of dollars donated from a Kickstarter campaign in 2015. The fragile suit will be placed in a state-of-the-art display case and a mannequin and will be displayed in the Wright Brothers Gallery. It will be located across a piece of the Wright Brothers flyer that Neil Armstrong had taken with, the, with him to the moon in 1969. Okay, so where to find slash contact us, so don't be afraid. <clears throat> to DM us on Instagram at bthssnhs or shoot us an email at bthssnhs at gmail.com. Okay, thank you to everyone for coming. I hope you guys have a great day and everyone had a great time learning about spacecraft with us.